We live in a world divided. They are the haves and the have-nots. More often than not, the question of opportunity is one determined by simple geography of where one is born. Those born into Western societies are blessed with the good fortune of being born into a life full of opportunity, of chance, as long as they know where to look. But what provides these opportunities? Take a look around almost any room or street corner in the developed world, and the answer is sure to be hiding in plain sight. Technology. Technologies that allow us to communicate, to conduct business, keep track of our finances, answer questions about almost anything. There's a seemingly insurmountable amount of information available to us at any time. But what of those people born in the less privileged areas of the world? In many cases, even the basic infrastructure for what we could consider conventional technologies, such as landline phones, simply does not exist. While it would be a gross oversimplification to say this lack of infrastructure is the only thing that has kept these countries in the dark, it certainly has not helped. This lack of access to digital information has, ever since someone recognizes it as a problem, been referred to as the digital divide. And just like any other problem, there are those seeking to resolve it. And although there may be barriers, the digital divide is slowly, with the aid of developed countries and individuals, including those countries who were previously excluded. The benefits of developing information technologies in poor countries cannot be ignored. While Western society is advanced on the wave of new media and new new media, poor countries are having trouble grasping onto plain old media. Along with simply granting access to ambiguous information, the access to information allows for the advancement of economic opportunity, education, can lead to increased health, along with various other factors. Think about it this way. As a member of the Western world, how much do you use any sort of information technology? Most importantly, how often do you use it for productive purposes? With easy access to information comes easy access to almost anything else. How do we connect to the internet? A video released by the Berkman Center uses a study conducted by the World Bank that shows that a 10% increase in mobile phone penetration in developing countries leads to a 1% increase in annual economic growth. It also argues that phones equipped with mobile internet could lead to even higher growth. A real life example of how this works is laid out by Iqbal Qadir's TED Talks presentation on the power of the mobile phone to end poverty. Basically, Kadir argues that 60 years of traditional aid have had no lasting impact on poor countries. Kadir goes on to say that in order to make a real difference, the citizens must be empowered through connection to the world at large. As if this assertion was not enough, Kadir went to Bangladesh and set up Grameen Phone, a cell phone company based around providing cell phone services to the poorer people of Bangladesh, and effectively proves his point by pointing out that his company had a larger impact on GNP than traditional aid ever had. The simple ob observation that led Kadir to do this is his idea that connectivity is productivity. And it only makes sense. Access to information technologies not only allows us to do more, but to do more quickly. By providing the communities of Bangladesh with access to telephones, the people were able to increase their economic spheres, therefore increasing their income. Kadir also debunks some other myths about poor countries, such as the myth that poor people offer no market, lack initial buying power, and that their primary survival needs must be met first. What his project reveals is that connectivity leads to more production, which creates a market with buying power, shared access can reduce the initial cost, and increased income also helps people to meet their primary needs. It is also interesting to note that Kadir's project also displayed a very common theme that is shared among many developing countries, the idea of leapfrogging, or skipping over old styles of infotech and going straight for the newer models. A reason that Kadir would have done this is for the fact that cell phones serve effectively the same purpose as a landline, and there's no point in wasting all the time and expenditures of running miles of telephone lines to rural villages when a single cell tower can canvas an entire area for a much lower cost. In Chapter 9 of the book The Digital Divide, Manuel Castells furthers Kadir's point by stating development without access to information would be like industrialization without access to electricity. He states that those who believe we need to address the real problems in the third world first, such as access to education, health, water, and electricity, and then move on to internet, are wrong. His reasoning behind this is that having an internet-based economy and management system allows countries the opportunity to cover their development on economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable grounds. Basically what he means here is that an information economy can directly benefit aspects such as education or health awareness and also provide funds to sustain other aspects such as healthcare and public utilities. Once again we will consider Kadir's project. His company is profitable. It pays taxes to the country, 
which the country can use to fund further development. The company employs people, and the people who use the phones he provides have increased economic opportunity. Basically, information technologies are a win-win for everyone. While aiding developing countries with digital technologies has shown to be more effective than traditional forms of aid alone, the fact is that neither one can function without the other. Instead, we should see them as equally important. Traditional aid helps establish basic infrastructure, while building information infrastructure helps sustain growth of the basic infrastructures that have been built. The essay Information and Equity by Lisa Livro and Sharon Farb states that connectivity is not enough. Once a group has been brought into access information, they must be taught how to effectively use it. This is one area where education and information technologies could overlap. Education in developing countries should go beyond basic literacy and cover digital literacy so that citizens can make effective use of whatever is available to them. Another important aspect to bringing developing countries into the digital age is cost. It must be done cheaply. The Berkman Center video referenced earlier points out a huge discrepancy in the cost of internet in developing countries versus the cost in fully networked ones. For $15 US, a person in Japan can receive internet at 200 megabits per second, whereas a person living in Kenya can expect to pay $119 for 2 megabits per second. The cost in Kenya is almost 175 times more in proportion to average income. The road to a true global information society still has a long way to go. Although information technologies are growing by leaps and bounds in developing countries, the progress must continue or these countries will fall behind once again, a fall from which they may not get back up. With the help of groups and individuals, however, the outlook is bright, even if there is still much work to be done.